guess what it's time for everybody it's time for an up dave that's right we have a new deep dave episode coming to you guys today because there is now an up dave on the dave ramsey lawsuit let's go dave 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 from the standpoint of ooh 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 you will not go unpunished. You guys uh, asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where today we're going to be focusing all about the business because we had a few book things going on. Now it's all about the business today. We're doing some business stuff. Today we have a new episode of Deep Daves. That is my series on this channel where we dive deep into the lives of guys named Dave, and sometimes we dive deep into the buttholes of buttholes named Dave. Today's butthole Dave is Dave Ramsey. This is actually the fourth installment, I believe, of the Deep Dave series on Dave Ramsey alone, and I don't know, the millionth installment of Deep Daves in general, because there's Daves on Daves, Daves all the way down, there's Daves everywhere, you guys. If you remember, about a year and a half ago now on this channel, I did my first three-part series on Dave Ramsey, where I talked about some of the righteous living policies that he had at his company, and I did an interview with a former employee of Ramsey Solutions who talked about the ways that Dave Ramsey was really into forcing his particular brand of Christian ideology on employees, having lots of rules including things like men and women not being allowed to ride in a car alone together, people having to follow his type of Christian belief, people not being allowed to live together before marriage, all kinds of rules that really focused on dictating the specifics of his employees' personal lives, which I'm not gonna say that that's necessarily illegal, but I personally think it's unethical. I don't think that you as a boss should be dictating what your employees do in their personal lives. That's just my personal opinion on that though. And then in addition to that, we covered a lawsuit that had just started. This was around June of 2021 at the time. And in that lawsuit, a woman who had been fired from Dave Ramsey's company claims that she had been the victim of discrimination because she was fired for getting pregnant outside of wedlock. And she was basically saying this is gender-based discrimination because Dave's out here saying, I didn't fire you for being pregnant. Can't fire someone for being pregnant. Pregnancy is a protected class in Tennessee. I fired you for being pregnant while you're not married. Added a little addendum on there. He's like, basically I fired you for having sex outside of marriage because sex outside of marriage is not allowed according to my religious living policy. So basically this lawsuit has been in the works for a while. I would highly recommend if you haven't watched it already, I did a video breaking down this lawsuit last June with Emily D. Baker, who is a lawyer here on YouTube. I had her on my channel to help me break down the legal elements of it that I'm not as well versed in. I will link that video up in the cards. Please check that one out if you haven't already. But as you guys know, lawsuits tend to be very slow. They tend to take a lot of time to play out. And I told you guys I'd update you when there was more to say about it. And that time is now because as of September 2nd, which is just a couple weeks ago, as of today, some new information has come out from the documents from court about this case. And guys, they are wild. So we are going to take a look at some of the news that has come up about this lawsuit. And wow, you guys. Wow. But in the meantime, if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe multiple times a week, including every Friday at 11 a.m. Central. I put out new videos about books and business and you won't want to miss those. So make sure you ring that little notification bell. And while we're at it, before we dive deep into Dave yet again, let's before that dive deep into today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community containing thousands of classes to help you explore your creativity and learn new skills. From art to web design to book marketing and more, you can use Skillshare to find classes that match your interests, hobbies, and skills you want to develop. As I mentioned last month, my favorite class I've been taking on Skillshare so far is called Introduction to Polish Language, Master Polish Alphabet, and Reading in Polish, taught by a woman named Veronika. Now that I'm almost a year into my journey of learning to speak Polish, this class has been helpful for me to practice pronunciation out loud and drill into my brain the differences between Polish and English letters and sounds. Dziękuję, Veronika. Bardzo to kocham. As y'all know, lately I've been developing a lot of interests outside of work, which, since I'm a former workaholic, it's quite nice to spend some time developing my hobbies. Lately I've started adding new classes to my Skillshare library, including classes on tattoo art styles, weightlifting, and more. 
Because Skillshare is ad-free, you can stay focused while learning new skills. New premium classes launch each week, and Skillshare's entire sure. catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. To join Skillshare, click the link in my description below where the first 1,000 people will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. I hope you all enjoy learning on Skillshare as much as I have been. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I'd also like to give a quick thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Patreon supporters' names are listed up on the screen, and in the description below you can find links for all of my Patreon supporters who contribute $5 a month and up. They have the option to link their own websites, small businesses, social media pages, causes they care about, whatever they like. So go ahead and check that out because they are awesome small business supporters as well. Now, let's dive back into Dave. So this article comes from the Tennessean of September 2nd, 2022. Employee sexual activity policies at Dave Ramsey's company revealed in new documents. So we'll give a little overview, talk about what's going on in this case, and take a look at some of the revelations that have come out in the court documents since then. Dave Ramsey's company fired employees based on certain sexual activity, and Ramsey himself once referred to a woman by a derogatory term after she raised allegations that an employee was having an extramarital affair. New court documents reveal. So if you guys remember when I did the whole deep dive on this last year at this time, we talked about Chris Hogan, who was formerly Dave Ramsey's co-host on his radio show. He was huge in the financial planning and personal finance industry along with Dave Ramsey. And it seemed like because Chris Hogan was higher up at the company, he seemed to be a little bit exempt from the rules that Dave imposed on his other employees. So while he would fire employees for living with their significant other outside of marriage or things like that, when Chris Hogan was revealed to be having an extramarital affair, which while Chris Hogan was married, he was still having sex outside of marriage as the sex that he was having was not just with his wife, he was cheating on his wife, in fact. And they ended up getting divorced and she had all kinds of terrible things to say about him. But because of that, it took Dave Ramsey a lot longer to actually fire Chris Hogan. He was able to get away with it for longer. There was even stuff about Dave telling Chris, like, okay, you can stay on, but you have to go to marital counseling and you have to, like, let me sit in on all the sessions which is also very invasive of Dave to do to him as well. Bro, like, that's his personal life. That's not your business, Dave. But Dave gave him that stipulation and let him stay on, whereas with other employees, he would just straight up fire them. So it did seem like someone who was higher up in the company was getting a little bit of special treatment, and that was something that a lot of people were concerned about. The revelations come as part of a lawsuit against Ramsey Solutions for terminating a female employee, Caitlin O'Connor, who was pregnant and not married at the time of her dismissal in June 2020. The new court documents shed light on how Ramsey, a nationally known evangelical Christian figure, and his company implement workplace policies based on, quote, Judeo-Christian values. I hear a lot of people say the phrase Judeo-Christian values, but people who say that phrase never seem to be referring to the entire body of values held by all Judeo-Christian religions. It tends to be specifically like one sect of evangelical Christianity alone. Have you guys noticed that too? I think a lot of people are trying to make their values seem a lot more universal than they are is what I'm trying to say. The documents which the company and its attorneys have long fought to keep sealed included a deposition transcript with Ramsey. If an employee is doing something that is contrary to standard Christian beliefs, normative Christian beliefs, then the people we deal with in the Christian community would feel that we are hypocrites and it would damage our brand, Ramsey said last year in a deposition. So basically Dave Ramsey's over here like, if my Christian clients found out that I was letting people who have sex outside of marriage stay at my company, that would damage the brand. But then he lets Chris Hogan stay at the company. That doesn't damage the brand though? I don't get it. And again, I, I know there's a lot of Christians out there who are hypocritical, but I also know plenty of Christians out there who actually do live their lives selflessly and do try to support others. Wouldn't a lot of Christians out there who genuinely believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ wouldn't they think it's damaging to the brand for Dave to fire a pregnant woman when that pregnant woman is about to bring a new life into the world and would need as much support as possible? Because there are a lot of people out there who genuinely do care about raising the next generation. Wouldn't they want to support that person? Like, wouldn't that damage those beliefs with those Christian people in the audience? I don't know. I think Dave's just making excuses. 
Ramsey Solutions says it terminated O'Connor for violating the company's righteous living policy, while O'Connor argues the company discriminated against her for being a pregnant woman. There are no written policies that explicitly state the company's stance on employee sexual activity. There are exceptions to righteous living if you are a man, O'Connor's lawyer said in a filing that accompanied transcripts from depositions with Ramsey and other company executives. In contrast, women who engaged in premarital sex have not been given second chances. In making their argument, O'Connor's attorneys focus on a separate situation in involving Chris Hogan, a former Ramsey Solutions media personality who eventually left the company in March 2021 after having extramarital affairs and lying to company leadership about the extent of those affairs. All facts Dave Ramsey and other company leaders acknowledge in the newly released deposition transcripts. So she's basically out here saying, okay, there was a man at this company, Chris Hogan, who was having sex outside of marriage. He was having an affair with a woman who is not his wife. And you didn't fire him, yet you fired me. Kind of seems a little sexist, Dave. So now she's using that as an example. Whether or not it was sexist, it's definitely hypocritical. It's definitely Dave giving special treatment to certain employees, and it's wrong. Whether or not what Dave did was definitively illegal, I think he's a bad person. I think he's a bad business owner. I am not a fan of Dave Ramsey. Before Chris Hogan left the company, his wife at the time, Melissa, shared information with company leadership about her husband's affairs. However, company leaders didn't fully believe her at the time, Ramsey said in his deposition. Ramsey said in his deposition with O'Connor's lawyers he saw her as erratic and completely out of control. All right, are we surprised at all that Dave Ramsey, who fired a pregnant woman, is over here like, this woman is just being hysterical. She's just being emotional. She just has emotions and no facts. Are we surprised at all that we're getting a little bit of Dave Ramsey misogyny as a treat in here? In an email at the time with other company executives, Ramsey referred to Melissa Hogan as a world-class bitch. He called Chris Hogan's wife, who was being cheated on a bitch, and sided with Chris Hogan, who was the one doing an extramarital affair, along with firing other people for having sex outside of marriage. Can we see how hypocritical this is? This is disgusting, Dave. Ramsey showed little remorse for his language he used in the phrase because it's pretty accurate. Wow, what a dick, dude. If you're allowed to call people a bitch, I can call you a dick, Dave. Dave the dick over here. There seems to be a pattern of Dave Ramsey believing abusive men with power who benefit him, Melissa Hogan said in an online statement Thursday evening responding to the deposition revelations. The fact that Dave Ramsey himself and Ramsey Solutions as a company, in spite of evidence and witnesses, covered their eyes and ears evidences a profound lack of wisdom and discernment, she added. Oh, and over here, it's like deep dive, more like deep Dave, am I right? When Chris Hogan admitted details about one of his affairs to company leadership, he said oral sex had occurred, but not sexual intercourse, according to depositions with Ramsey and other company executives. Ramsey and other company executives said in their depositions they don't fire employees for engaging in oral sex outside of marriage, but only sexual intercourse. You guys ready for this? This is going to blow your mind. Sexual intercourse includes oral sex. You ready for this? I looked up the definition of sexual intercourse. Sexual contact between individuals involving penetration, especially the insertion of a man's erect penis into a woman's vagina, typically culminating in orgasm and the ejaculation of semen. So let's look at a few adverbs in this definition. One says typically and one says especially. Typically means not always, but usually. And especially means it is a subcategory of a larger whole. Not larger whole, get it? Because we're talking about sex. (laughs) Haha. Anyway, sexual contact between individuals involving penetration. Now, this definition says involving penetration. There are other definitions. This one's from Oxford, but there's a definition from Merriam Webster, which is more broad. So, sexual intercourse in this case says involving penetration. That means that a genital has to be penetrating something. It doesn't say it has to be penetrating a vagina. It says especially a vagina, but Especially doesn't mean 100% of the time, now does it? You could be penetrating, hear me out on this guys, you could penetrate someone's mouth with your penis and that would be definitionally sexual intercourse. This is gonna blow your mind, Dave. Is this blowing your mind? It probably is blowing, (laughs) blowing, get it? (laughs) Is it blowing your mind? More like blowing his dick. (laughs) Anyway, no, this probably is blowing Dave's mind literally because As someone with this righteous living policy, I doubt that Dave Ramsey actually knows much about sex or the different sex acts that people do, which is why he's like, well, you know, this kind of sex makes baby and this kind of sex doesn't make baby. So sex that make baby, obviously bad. Dude, do you think he believes in the poop hole loophole and all of that? (laughs) You think he's doing like the poop hole loophole thing? Like, ah, if you put it in a butt, that's fine. And then if we look at Merriam-Webster, 
This one, Merriam-Webster says it has to be heterosexual intercourse involving penetration of the vagina by the penis. I don't know. That's a little straight people specific. But this Merriam-Webster definition of sexual intercourse, see, again, it's, it's different all over the place. This one says physical sexual contact between individuals that involves the genitalia of at least one person. So, hear me out, you've got a penis and you're putting it in a mouth, or if you have a mouth and you're putting it on a vagina, I don't know specifically what Chris Hogan was doing in his affair. Regardless, that is, are we ready for this? Sexual intercourse! That's what he did. Dave's over here like, it's not technically sexual intercourse because it wasn't coitus. Dave, not everything's about coitus. Calm down, my dude. The depositions also reveal that, including O'Connor, the company has fired three female employees who were pregnant. Ramsey Solutions maintains all three were fired for having premarital sex. One of those women, not O'Connor, notified the company of her pregnancy the week after she got married, according to a transcript of a deposition with Armando Lopez, Senior Executive Director for Human Resources at Ramsey Solutions. Wait. So she notified them after she got married? Did they, like, take a look back and were like, hmm, let's calculate how far along you are. Hmm, okay, well, maybe you conceived this child before marriage, so you're gone. Now, there's this dude I saw on Twitter named Brandon Frick. I don't know anything about this dude. Who is he? Yeah, I don't know anything about him. But he put up a lot of stuff on Twitter about the Dave Ramsey lawsuit, so I thought we'd take a look at this now because there's some wild shit in these. Are we ready? So it says right here, first thing to know is that the prohibition against premarital sex is nowhere made explicit in the employee handbook. Nowhere. So Dave's over here like, well, premarital sex that can potentially make a baby is not allowed, but premarital or extramarital sex with the penis in the mouth is okay because uh, the guy who's at a higher position at my company did that one, so he makes me more money. Like, that's what I think is going on here. But anyway, it says in the court documents... That the policy that prohibits premarital sex at Ramsey Solutions is not written down anywhere. Is that correct? Answer. Not that I'm aware of. Look at that. It's not anywhere in the handbook. Employees simply agree to a righteous living clause and Dave Ramsey contends that should suffice because he doesn't know of a single church that doesn't have that prohibition. Certainly not evangelical. You know, the strict ones. Well, he doesn't know of a single church that doesn't have that prohibition. My dude, Dave, you're not running a church. You're running a company. And whether or not that's legal, like, I'm not here to be the church police. <laughs> I'm not here to say that you can't run your company with church rules by law because I'm not a lawyer. He's saying like, every church does this. Yeah, but Dave, you're not legally registered as a church. You're a for-profit company. That's completely different. The lawyer asked Dave Ramsey what scriptures in particular forbid premarital sex. And he says, is there a Bible verse you know of that prohibits it? And Dave says, I suspect there are several, none of which at this moment I can call off the top of my head. Well, Dave, if you were going to go into court, if you were letting this... <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't settle this outside of court, you knew that you were going into court to fight this woman who's claiming that you discriminated against her. Why did you not ahead of time look through the Bible and gather some Bible verses? Instead, you're just like, eh, I can't remember. They're there somewhere, I'm pretty sure. The sources trust me, bro. Dave, this is so incredibly stupid of you. What are you doing? The lawyer keeps Dave Ramsey on the scriptures and we get to see what strict adherence looks like. All right, so now we're going to talk about adherence to Christian value. So the lawyer says, isn't forgiveness a Christian value? Dave says, of course. Would you consider being non-judgmental a Christian value? Dave says, no. Well, that checks out. Didn't somewhere in the Bible it say something to that effect? Judge not lest you be judged? Dave replies, and in the Bible it says for us to judge the spirits and to judge. And several times we're told to judge. We're so, and then, then Dave keeps going on and on about judging and how he thinks it's okay to judge. But forgiveness is a Christian value. So Dave, maybe you should forgive this woman for getting pregnant and let her have her baby and not take away her source of income that she's going to use to feed her child. That would be better, I would say. That would be a better Christian thing to do. I'm not religious, so I don't know what I'm talking about. According to Dave Ramsey, that means while the scripture demands they fire people for pre- or extramarital sex, it means they are to be generous in their severance to the unwed mother who was just fired for breaking a policy that is nowhere written. So, once again, this wasn't even written in the policy. Which, again, this was the thing that when I had Emily D. Baker on my channel, she talked about how the woman who was fired, one of the arguments she was considering making was the fact that she's also Christian. She's also Christian, 
but that her specific beliefs in Christianity did not forbid having sex outside of marriage, that she still was a spiritual person who attends Christian church, but that wasn't one of the beliefs that she adheres to. So if it was never specifically outlined in, in the employee handbook and the handbook just said righteous living policy, you have to follow Christian values. Christian values could mean different things to different people. Christianity has so many different sects to it. And there are so many rules that are in the Bible that nobody really in modern society follows anyway. So is Dave Ramsey following every single thing in the Bible to the letter or is he just expecting employees to be able to read his mind? This seems completely unfair. And I'm not here to comment on the legal aspects of it. I'm not a lawyer. It just does seem completely unfair though. So it says, do you think that it's being compassionate and kind to terminate a pregnant employee? And Dave says, I think we offered her an amazing amount of money. Amazing. An amazing compensation package. And we were, no one was unkind in any way. So yes, I think she knew what she was into and exactly what was coming. The lawyer asks, do you think a separation package is substitute for knowing you have a job? Which absolutely not, because that's a steady stream of income. So Dave's like, we gave her a good severance package. It's like, dude, you, you cut off her stream of income. We don't even know here whether or not she was a good employee. Like, that's not even part of this. She was fired having nothing to do with her job performance. She was fired solely for being pregnant or sorry, for being unmarried. Now, this is the part I find interesting. So this person, Brandon Frick on Twitter says, if she had gotten pregnant through IVF, she would have been all right if only someone would have thought to ask. So... As we know, Dave is claiming here, you're not fired for being pregnant. You can't fire someone for being pregnant. Pregnancy is a legally protected class. He'd get, definitively he'd lose this case if he fired her for being pregnant alone, right? He's claiming he fired her for having premarital sex. Now, how is Dave ever going to prove that she had premarital sex? There's a baby growing inside of her. So you, you might assume that she had premarital sex, but what if she had the baby through IVF? What if she went through some other type of procedure that didn't involve having any sexual contact in order to conceive this baby? People do that, right? So that's entirely possible. So is Dave going to be able to even prove that? Or did she just admit it? I don't know. Let's wait and see. So what does it say right here? So the question says, what if she would have gotten pregnant through IVF? Would she have been terminated? And then the witness says, no. And then it says, do you know if anyone asked her? I'm sorry. Do you know if anyone asked her? No. So they literally never asked her if she did IVF or if she had sex. Dave just fired her, assuming. So then someone says, what if Miss O'Connor had been S-aid? Would she still have been terminated? And then the witness, who I assume here is Dave, says, we have never faced that. I doubt it. It is not consistent with who we are. It's different than an active decision to have premarital sex considerably different. So again, how does Dave know? I'm not sure if she like admitted this because I assume, I think what it was was that she was living with her fiance or she was at least, she had a fiance that she's planning to marry. I don't know, she might be married to him now. That's the father of her child. But whether or not she had been SA'd or whether or not she had done IVF, that's really none of Dave's business. And can Dave prove that? Again, this is why I'm not a lawyer, but like, would she have to prove that she didn't do that? No, because the burden of proof wouldn't be on her, right? That doesn't make any sense. But these court documents are just wild. Brandon Frick here on Twitter says, I mean, not everything involving human sexuality is forbidden. Dave discusses some gray areas. Like if a married man talks to a female coworker in a way that makes her cringe, well, he'll get a good talking to. Okay, are we about to talk about harassment here? So this lawyer says, at this time, blank, so that's one employee, made the allegation that he had told someone else she looked good in her shirt and he missed seeing her and thought about her and he missed her within a few hours of waking up. Did he deny that conversation took place? Dave says no. And then it says, all right, and even though he admitted to saying that, the company did not fire him for righteous living violation, correct? Dave says, we don't. We have never fired someone only for flirting or only for telling someone they looked good in their shirt. The question says, is that a violation of the righteous living core values to be engaging in that sort of conduct as a married employee to be flirting with a female coworker? Dave says, a minor violation. He was confronted on it. Okay. So it's like, okay, we gave him a slap on the wrist and told him not to do it again. But someone's getting pregnant. You're done. You're out of here, dude. And take the case of a man whose wife alleged she had engaged in a sex act with another woman. So this is, this is Chris Hogan right here. This is the stuff about Chris Hogan in the documents. It says, if the wife hadn't been so hysterical, they could have possibly helped. But you know how emotional women who have been cheated on by their husbands can be, am I right? That really sounds like what Dave said. Let's look at his words. So this is talking about Chris Hogan here. 
And he said he had taken comfort in this lady because they were both married to crazy people, according to him, and an emotional affair had developed and that an oral sex act had begun but was not completed, according to him. Who cares if it was comp- what, what do you mean completed, guys? I, I shouldn't- I shouldn't be intentionally ignorant here. I know that men like Dave Ramsey, I know that straight Christian men believe sexual completion involves when the man shoots his load. I doubt they cared whether the woman finished or not. And also I hate that term finishing too, because it's like sex can end before anyone orgasms if you just feel emotionally satisfied and want to be done, or sex can end long after. You can continue to do more things if you want to keep going afterwards. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like people have such a, I don't know if this is just straight people bullshit or what, but some people have such weird ideas about what the start and end of sex has to be. Sex can be whatever, whatever you and your partner personally like. Don't let anyone sex police you. We will, we will, we will. Especially not Dave, dude. But anyway, let's continue. So it says, his wife at the time came accusing him of many things and we were trying to get to the bottom of what the truth was and her erratic behavior and his stonewalling. Their church elders were in the room, several of our operating board members, and a shouting match between her began. Her shouting and accusing him of this, trying to get him to own up for it, and he said he had taken comfort in this lady. Uh, yeah, so this is the part where Dave's accusing Chris Hogan's ex-wife of being hysterical and being emotional and irrational and whatever. So she had her, her behavior kept us from believing anything she said. Oddly enough, I'll add, it turns out that she was right. I wish she had been a credible source. She was a credible source, dude. She was right. You just thought she was too emotional as a woman. Dude, Dave Ramsey is a sexist piece of trash over here. Dude, I like the way he's covering. I don't know anything about this Brandon Frick dude, but I love the way he's covering this story here and the way he's taken photos of these or screenshots of the court documents to put up here for us because these are amazing. So what separates the guy who received oral sex and the woman who got pregnant? The dude was just a sinner straying from the fold. Pitiable, really. I love this. It's like, Dave Ramsey is definitely gender discriminating. At least it feels to me like he's gender discriminating. Now, the argument I've heard that Dave Ramsey's planning to make or has made is that there have been men who have been living with their female fiance outside of marriage like before getting married and Dave has fired them too. He's like, I'm firing this man for living with a woman outside of marriage because they're not married yet. They shouldn't, they're living in sin. I can fire them for that. So he's claiming that he has been consistent across the board with gender, except Chris, Chris Hogan's just an exception because he makes him more money, I guess. At this point in time, did you feel like Chris Hogan had been deceitful to the company? Dave says he is, uh, the further we got into this, the more we discovered how wounded and harmed he was and is, I guess. And we were trying to walk through a healing process with him. So is this just boys will be boys? Is this just Dave saying here like, yeah, he, you think the woman who's pregnant isn't hurting? Chris is hurting? Again, this is, Dave just wants to give special treatment to Chris. We were walking with a broken guy who was trying to heal. As I mentioned earlier, we were hoping for his spiritual and emotional healing. Okay, all of this, whatever. I will be, I will be honest here and say that, okay, fair enough. Maybe Chris Hogan is a terrible guy. Maybe he is a wounded person. But I don't think it's fair to claim that Chris Hogan gets this exception for he's going through a difficult time. But then a woman who's also going through a difficult time doesn't get that same grace. That doesn't seem right to me. That does seem prejudiced. I personally think that Dave should not be involving himself in the personal lives of any of his employees. Whether that is Chris Hogan, whether that is Caitlin O'Connor, the woman who got pregnant, it doesn't matter. Just let people make mistakes in their personal lives. When I say mistakes, I'm referring to Chris Hogan having an affair. I'm not referring to Caitlin O'Connor getting pregnant because that baby is very wanted. But my point is let people do things that you don't like with in their own personal lives. That's not your business, Dave. So I'm not saying he had to have been harder on Chris. I'm saying it's hypocritical that he wasn't harder on Chris, but I don't necessarily think he should have been. I don't think he should have been hard on Caitlyn at all. I think he should have just stayed out of it in general. This is not your business, Dave. I mean, I guess Ramsey Solutions is his business, but other people's lives are not your business, dude. And then here is the, by contrast, where he's like, oh, Chris was just going through a hard time. The question says, and on the next page, 2484, you write that, I'm afraid we're being played after we're warned he's a world-class liar and manipulator. Maybe he isn't playing as in blank is a world-class bitch. Is that a term referring to a woman as a bitch that you frequently use? And Dave says, no, I don't frequently use that. And then some, the lawyer says, why did you use that term to refer to this woman as a bitch? And Dave says, it's pretty accurate. I think that's referring to Chris Hogan's ex-wife, Melissa. 
And the lawyer asks, have you ever used that terminology to refer to men as bitches? And Dave says, probably. I'm an equal opportunity offender. Oh, Dave, you're such an edgy boy. Who's an edgy boy? So anyway, Dave Ramsey sucks. He does have some good financial advice from what I've heard. Don't go into debt. Also, some of his financial advice sucks where he's like, don't buy a house unless you can afford a 15 year mortgage. No, fuck that. Don't keep paying rent and throwing rent down the drain for longer and longer. Buy a house with a 30 year mortgage if you want. I'm not a financial advisor. That's just what I did and I'm perfect happy. Anyway, that's today's up Dave on the Dave Ramsey lawsuit that's been going on. I hope you guys enjoyed today's installment of Deep Dave's the series where we dive deep into guys named Dave and dive deep into the depths of the buttholes of buttholes named Dave. I will see you guys again soon, but in the meantime, please keep on supporting small businesses and find a financial advisor who isn't Dave Ramsey. There's plenty of other qualified people out there who aren't doing bullshit like this. Have a fantastic start to your day. Bye, friends! Dave! 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 From the standpoint of ooh, 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 you will not go unpunished. You guys asked for it.